So LAP5 here, as it says, uh, it's mainly on intermolecular attractive forces, right? And um, so the first page of the data pages, of course, I strongly recommend that you read the, the introduction first. But uh, for me, it's easier to talk about it uh, going through this. Uh, so the first part uh, will explore the um, the effect of intermolecular forces uh, between two solvents, the effect on physical properties. And so um, first, but you need to uh, realize what kind of molecules you have. So you will draw the Lewis structure of water and then list its intermolecular forces. You will do the same with hexane, uh, do its Lewis structure and then list the intermolecular forces. And that's why uh, this lab um, most likely will have to be done on paper. Or if you like to type what you can type here, you could list the intermolecular uh, forces and then do the Lewis structure on a piece of paper where you will uh, have all your drawings and then put that uh, at the end of the lab report, for example but then mention here, uh, see last page or something like that, so I know. Okay, once you have done this, uh, which molecule has the strongest overall intermolecular forces, you know, between water and hexane, and so you should give me the name of the one. Uh, then um, here, uh, surface tension will be tested with a um, paper clip. And so you can do part of this at home, and there is a, a procedure to follow, part one here. Uh, you can try this experiment at home if you want. You don't have to because there is a video, um, but you know, you could try it. And for this, you will need a paper clip and a, a glass of water and tweezers. I know you will not have exane, so you can only do it with water. So tweezers are, are important here because <laughs> If you don't have tweezers, it's going to be very hard to place the paper clip, you know, flat on the surface because you really want to bring it uh, flat on the surface. And um, so see if it will sink or float uh, on the surface or in the middle of the beaker, right? And then there is this video to uh, confirm your uh, observations. And there is also um, something to do with a balloon. If you have the balloons at home, only if you have them, right? So you would need a balloon, blow it up, and then a sink uh, so that you have a stream of water. So you want to have room where to put the balloon. So that's why you, the, the tap has to be high. And uh, you would... Um, uh, rub your balloon on, on your clothes, you know, to get some elec electric, uh, electric, uh, static electricity, sorry. And then bring that close to the stream of water and see what happens. And again, there is a video to confirm your results. So uh, let me go back to here. So you would uh, write down here uh, the results of the experiment. And I you have to watch the video because I tell what happens for the exam, exam, so watch the video for that. Then decide which one uh, of the two molecules has the stronger surface tension, which one has the higher boiling point, and those are given to you, so that should not be difficult to to do. And then does it make sense that, you know, such molecule has the stronger surface tension and then such molecule has the higher boiling point and explain why. So ex I expect uh, some explanation of why, you know, this molecule has a stronger surface tension and this molecule has a higher boiling point. Uh, most likely you want to use, you know, intermolecular attractive forces, right? And that's the place where you will record your observations uh, for the experiment with the balloon. And again, uh, you have to watch the video to get uh, to know what happens with the exam because I tell on the video what happens for the exam. So even if you do it at home, uh, somehow you have to watch the video just to confirm your uh, results and also to get the answer for um, exam. And then here, uh, you need to explain why the water streams behave like it does uh, 
when the charged balloon is approached. Same with the exane, you know, this part is, you have more to say here than here, you will see. Okay, that's for the um, effect of intermolecular forces on physical properties. And then um, part B of the lab uh, goes over um, solubility. And so first you will uh, experiment between uh, oil and water, you know, are they soluble together? And um, you can try at this at home if you have a small uh, container that, uh, you know, uh, that you, you don't mind uh, uh, putting in the trash afterwards or that you can easily clean. But it needs to be capped. You need to be able to uh, close it and, and or seal it somehow. And you will uh, put some water and then uh, vegetable oil, any kind of uh, vegetable oil that you use for cooking. So you don't want to use too much of it, right? So uh, that's why please use a small container so we don't waste uh, oil. And um, if you have food coloring, or candle dye of different colors, then you you are welcome to use them. Um, so here it explains, first you would fill with the uh, water, the container with water, then add about the same amount of, or less of vegetable oil. And then if you have food coloring, you want to add it. And then uh, look at what happens, you know, you want to see what happens when you drop the food coloring. Record your observations and then shake, uh, close the container and shake it and record your observations again. And if you have both food coloring, then you would add the second one at that point. Uh, please, if you are composting at, at home, uh, try to remove the oil layer uh, for disposal in the organic waste because it's better than uh, having it in the sink pipes. Okay, so that's why I, I ask you to not use too much when you do that experiment. But there is a video, you know, if you don't have time or you don't don't have a small container for that, uh, you can uh, watch the video. And same with the uh, solubility of biological compound or common household substances. Uh, they, are, um, they are listed here. So, uh, I do this with spoons because I found that it was easier to see uh, in a you know, stainless steel spoon, right? Um, uh, and then to speak, to uh, mix. Again, you want to, in this experiment, you will test the difference between water and vegetable oil. So you will want uh, some water on, on one spoon, some vegetable oil on the other spoon, and then you will test uh, if table salt, sugar, lemon juice, if you have some, uh, rubbing alcohol, if you have some, vitamin E, if you have some, uh, and see how they are dissolving or, or not in the oil and in the water, right? And so these uh, explanations on how to do this. And, and I understand perfectly if you don't have these things at home and cannot do it, it's fine. Uh, if you do it, please dispose of the spoon of oil in the organic waste if you are composting at home. It's better than put it in the sink. And so you have all these videos to uh, watch to get the answers. You know, all these videos are short videos, you know, two, three minutes uh, at most. Uh, so, um, and same, uh, there is another experiment with the uh, uh, milk, but this would be easier to do if you have whole milk, right? Whole milk would be the best. Uh, a bowl, water, food coloring, Q-tips and hand soap. Uh, the food coloring is not optional, so you can only do it if you have food coloring. Um, I've used a uh, beet juice, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, to simulate food coloring because I don't have any. Um, also, 
if you don't have whole milk, whole milk, uh, you know, you can try with the two percent milk. Uh, but the, the fatter, the better, right? So you want to try that if you have, you know, milk that is fat enough. Um, so please watch the video if you don't have the things needed, uh, you know, to do the experiment yourself. So, um, so here you in page eight of the lab, you will need to draw what you see when you are mixing oil and water together, you know, in that uh, small container that you shake, you want to uh, draw, you know, uh, what you see uh, after you have shaken the, the or, or before, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not very important when you draw it, but uh, it, you should see uh, that they, they won't mix. And so it, it should show that. Write down your observations. So here, when you write your observations, you want to say, so if they don't mix, you know, which one will sit on top, which one will sit on the bottom. If you uh, have food coloring and, and you used it, and, and the video shows with food coloring, so you should tell where is the food uh, coloring going, right? Does it dissolve in both or only one and which one? and then uh, decide if water and oil are soluble in one another there. Okay, so that's where uh, chapter eight is needed to do the solubility prediction of this table 2A, where you are testing the solubility of biological compounds or common household uh, substances. You need to predict beforehand what will happen with the salt in water and oil, the sugar in water and oil, the lemon juice, the isopropyl alcohol, and the vitamin E. You need to decide beforehand, you know, before you watch the videos or, or before you do it yourself, are they going to be water soluble or fat soluble? And so um, for this, you will need to definitely read the background information. It's all explained in there. And uh, so let's go here. So the background information, so first page here. You want to read uh, all that background information and it goes over intermolecular forces, which uh, you should be familiar with now that we have uh, covered chapter seven. It reminds you of those forces. And then, um, yes, you want to read that. And this shows how uh, water and ethanol are mixing well because they both experience um, hydrogen bonding, right? Um, water and ethanol, they can interact uh, through dipole-dipole interactions, right? They both have the dipoles. Hydrogen bonding because they both have hydrogen bonded to oxygen and London dispersion forces, right? So here it shows how the dipoles and I don't understand why these arrows are opposite, but this should be oriented the other way. <laughs> um, here, the hydrogen bonding uh, is shown by those uh, green lines, how hydrogen is attracted to the oxygen of another molecule, right? This hydrogen is attracted to the oxygen of the molecule of water, etc. So, but here, the key statement here is, is here. Uh, this uh, often is summarized as like dissolves like. And so polar com compound will have dipole moments that can interact through dipole-dipole intermolecular attractive forces. And so will be similar enough to form an homogeneous mixture or homogeneous solution. Whereas non-polar compound will not be able to form dipole-dipole interactions with the polar compound. And so the two will mix heterogeneously, right? It's the key uh, phrase here, like dissolves like. Uh, and that is something you will learn in chapter eight. And it means that uh, like properties uh, will mingle very well together. And uh, the, the property in particular is the polarity. When you look at the polarity of your molecules, if they are both polar, so polar dissolves with polar, 
uh, and non-polar will dissolve well with non-polar. But if you try to um, dissolve a polar substance in a non-polar substance, they will not mix well. They will uh, stay um, each on their side. And so here you're given the formulas of those substances you will test, uh, you know, in oil and water. And um, so that's the formula for citric acid. Citric acid is the acid in lemon juice, right? So we're supposing that lemon juice is mainly citric acid, right? Because we are at, at home and uh, we have to do with what we have. So here, formula of citric acid. And so um, whenever you don't see an, an atom where, you know, like for example, you have oxygen here, a double bond, and then a single bond to OH. In that corner, it's a carbon, right? This is the way um, chemists draw uh, structures because carbon is everywhere. So we don't uh, put the C, but the carbon is what makes those, you know, the backbone of this molecule. And then we specify when it's not carbon or hydrogen. And here, where you, whenever you have an oxygen, then it's shown. And when you have hydrogen bonded to oxygen, it has to be shown also. So there is a lot of oxygen there, right? Uh, and uh, you know that the CO bond is polar, right? The carbon oxygen bond is a polar bond and also the OH bond is polar. So it looks like you have a lot of diapers in that molecule, right? So overall, you can tell just because you have a lot of carbon, oxygen, and oxygen, hydrogen bonds, you can tell that this molecule is polar. And um, so then you decide, okay, this molecule is polar. And then because it, uh, like dissolves like, so this is polar, so it will dissolve well in water because water is polar. And this is something you have to remember, right? Water is polar. So citric acid should dissolve very well in water because it's both polar, right? Now, um, oil, there is no, uh, well, oil. So what you have to tell yourself is oil is mainly carbon and hydrogens in, and long chains of it, right? Long chains of carbons bonded to hydrogens. And then so it's a CC, carbon carbon chain, and then hydrogens all around to complete the octet. And you know that the carbon hydrogen and the carbon carbon bonds are non-polar. So oil is non-polar. You, you have to, I don't know if it's said somewhere, but oil is non-polar. You want to remember that. So oil is non-polar. And so if you have a polar molecule, it will not dissolve well in a non-polar molecule like oil, oil, right? So then in the table, you would say um, water soluble for citric acid, for example. And so you do the same thing with sugar. Uh, there is NaCl, you know, sodium chloride. It's not shown here because, you know, sodium chloride is an ionic compound made of sodium ion and chloride ion. Here, vitamin E has a long chain of, so these are just carbons bonded together with hydrogens around them. Those cycles are made of carbon as well. And then uh, you have just two oxygens in that molecule. So this CO and OH bond will be polar, but overall, you have to decide overall what is mainly uh, predominant are non-polar bonds, right? In the case of vitamin E. Um, and isopropyl alcohol, again, the, uh, in the center here, there is a carbon, it's not shown, but there is a carbon bonded to an hydrogen. Um, and then isopropyl alcohol has three carbons. And the central carbon has a, a, a bond to the OH uh, alcohol function. So uh, let, let me go to that table here. So when you do your predictions here, you want to use those Lewis structures. So except for NSL, but uh, here use the Lewis structures 
to decide is it water soluble or fat soluble, right? And remember, like dissolves like. So water is polar, fat is non-polar. So whenever you decide your molecule is polar, then it should be water soluble. And whenever you decide your molecule is non-polar, then it will be um, fat soluble, okay? And then you will uh, observe with the video or do it yourself. If you like to do it, do it yourself and say, you know, I saw the salt dissolve in water and, you know, write what happens, right? Is it soluble or not? Uh, and it's observation, so um, details are always <laughs> welcomed, right? Just don't say yes, no, or, or I, I, especially here, I would not like that, you know, say uh, what you see, right? What, what happens? Um, okay, remember, um, ionic compounds are made of ions, and being an ion is like the uh, ult ultimate uh, polarity, right? It's when you have a full charge, full positive charge, full negative charge, as compared to polarity where it's partial positive charge and partial negative charges. So uh, this can be considered polar. Um, okay, the soap experiment or soap and milk. Um, there was something, yes, here. Um, one last thing here about, uh, yeah, notice how uh, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol is not food, so um, it's a common household substance. Please do not drink that, <laughs> right? It's a uh, a topical uh, antiseptic. Um, so, uh, so here there is an explanation about the, how the digestive system uses water to move uh, foods through the stomach, small intestine and large intestine. And then the uh, nutrients that uh, are um, uh, water soluble are readily absorbed into the bloodstream because water, you, we know we are made of water, right? So water is the main solvent in our body. So whatever is fat, like uh, fats and fat soluble nutrients, like non-polar vitamins will not be miscible with water. And so the way your body uh, does it is that it emulsifies the fat into droplets and then utilize micelles to transport the non-polar nutrients to the absorptive walls of the intestine. So what is a micelle? A micelle is a group of molecules with a polar end and a non-polar end, end. And they aggregate to create a polar surface that interacts with water and a non-polar center that can dissolve. So here that's a drawing of the uh, soap molecule. It's a long chain of carbons and hydrogen. And then at the end, only one end, there is that C double bond O and single bond O that O has a negative charge and it's uh, basically an ionic compound, right? Because it needs Na plus here to be neutral. And so it's called sodium stearate. It's, it's a soap molecule. So there is what we call that polar head, right? Here, this is the polar head. And then there is this long uh, non-polar chain, right? The tail, non-polar tail of the soap that is very long. And so that long non-polar tail is not soluble in water, as opposed to this end of the molecule, it's soluble to water, the, the COO uh, negative one end of it is polar, is polar and soluble in water. And so the way these molecules uh, do to, you know, to be able to be in water and at the same time, um, you know, have their non-polar tails uh, you know, together, they, they form micelles, which means they are forming, and the micelle here is drawn in a 2D uh, paper, but it's really a spherical structure, right? You need to imagine that it's a sphere where uh, all the tails are gathered in the center because they like to be next to each other, right? Because they experience London dispersion forces all together. And uh, the, the 
polar head are showing up to the outside because they like to be facing water. And so this way, uh, you know, they can uh, be transported with water, but inside the micelle, you can have some fat, you know, being uh, stuck in there and that's how it's transported. And that's how soap uh, is, we are able to uh, degrease our hands using soap because the uh, non-polar tails of those uh, soap molecules will gather around the fat, uh, the grease molecules, and they form micelles. And so the outside is the outside of the micelle is soluble in water. And so that's why you're able to wash it away with water. So um, these are called, these type of molecules are called surfactant when they have a, a polar end and a non-polar end. Yeah, so here it says what I've been saying. Um, The polar head of the molecules will have similar intermolecular attractive forces with water and be soluble in water, while the non-polar tail of the molecule will not be soluble in water and will interact with other non-polar tails of surfactant molecules. And so, um, soap is like that, so it kind of uh, is uh, ambivalent. And uh, in the experiment with the milk, it will be attracted by the fat of the milk, you know, using the, sorry, the fat of the milk will be attracted to the uh, non-polar tails of the soap, but the polar head will be attracted to water. And so because of that, it will have a different behavior. Uh, uh, a Q-tip, you know, uh, with soap will have, a, will create a different behavior in water and in milk. So if you don't have food coloring, then you have to watch the video for this one. And then there are questions. Um, and hopefully, you know, here, um, how can you tell experimentally that two substances are soluble together? So how do you know if a solid is soluble in a liquid? And how do you know if two liquids are soluble together? And there are key words here uh, that I'd like you to be able to uh, tell me what is the adjective that we use to describe a mixture of substance soluble together and what is the adjective describe to describe a, a mixture of substance insoluble together. Um, here uh, you, you will uh, theoretically predict, you know, if your uh, biological compound will be water or fat soluble based on their Lewis structure and polarity only. And so, um, here, what basic rule of solubility will you use and explain how you decided that the substance was water soluble and how you decided the substance was fat soluble. So it's all about, you know, polarity and uh, like this sounds like, so you want to write about this here. Um, and if there are differences between your predictions and the observations, then try to explain them or, or uh, tell what went wrong so that you uh, made a mistake if you did, right? It, it's okay to um, have, you know, incompatibilities. Uh, and so we want you to uh, tell about it here. And uh, this is again the soap molecule, but it shows all that those carbons and hydrogens. So, you will need to do a square around the end of the molecule, molecule that is non-polar, a circle around the part that is polar, draw uh, molecules of water on the side where they are, you know, gonna be, and exane. So exane, uh, it's made of, um, you will draw the Lewis structure at the beginning of this uh, lab. So it's made of six uh, carbons, and you know, hydrogens only, so it's non-polar. So you will draw some exane molecule, you know, around the soap molecule and put it where they should be, right? It's important to place them where they should be. Uh, and then uh, this is kind of a repetition from uh, the first part of the lab where you need to list the intermolecular attractive forces between the soap and the water and the exane and the soap. 
Um caçu.